Um, there's a real danger here that we're going to get our act together, um, which is a bit scary, isn't it? So let's hold on to that for the, for the rest of the morning, because actually um, here we are with uh, the NHS and people from all over the spectrum of the NHS, Surrey County Council, district and borough colleagues and uh, fire service colleagues, and we're all focusing on this issue, and I'm really pleased that we are. Um, We've talked a little bit about the money and the partnership funding, and I just wanted to mention uh, that this morning, in case you were wondering what it is. You'll remember that for the first time last financial year, and now we're April, we're into the next financial year, that the government routed some money for social care via the PCT. And uh, for Surrey, that was 10.6 million last year. It's I think it's 10.2 this year and we've just heard uh, I think very recently the end of last year that that will continue it's been confirmed for four years so this is a real opportunity and the way that we've wanted to use it in Surrey is a bit of good old-fashioned bridging money that we used to like in days gone by where actually we need some money to pump prime things and telecare and telehealth are our priorities in that fund. Because if we don't get this right, then all of the endless discussions we have about how to keep people out of hospital, how to manage the, the, this balance that we've already talked about, about quality and cost, um, will just be a waste of time. Because actually these two elements will, are, are the biggest things that make the difference. So it is about making sure that people stay at home. And those of you that know me will know that I'm absolutely passionate about that. Maggie and I come together on a number of things. But actually, people in being enabled to live in their own home for as long as possible is, is one of ours. And um, also making sure that we manage the money. Because if we don't, again, we can sit around and talk about a quality of care. But unless we've got uh, the money in the right place to do that, it's not going to happen. I think one of the things that um, we would want to just uh, put in this arena is it's not only about older people and it's not only about dementia. Um, Ava's talked a lot about a couple of younger, quite scarily younger people who would uh, be able to take advantage of telehealth. Um, for us, the challenge of enabling uh, people with a learning disability to live ordinary lives is a big challenge and telecare particularly but also telehealth can help with that particularly as that learning disability population gets older and starts to have some of these conditions that older people then have and for a group of people to be able you will know that Surrey has a much larger learning disability population uh, than most other counties so we're very keen to extend it out to that group. It does, it, telecare is about complementing telehealth and that we are really keen that we all start to refer um, people for telecare in Surrey. And I think one of the things that we were just talking about over coffee this morning, you do a lot of business, don't you, in the first 10 minutes before you come in, is just the pace of change that we need to um, achieve in Surrey. We are a place that takes forever to do new things. And we've talked to Maggie's given examples. Everybody's given examples of where everybody else is using this technology and making really good uh, changes as a result of it. And I think one of the things we're trying to do today is just make sure that this is here. The money's here, the willingness is here, the enthusiasm's here, the sign-up's here. Nobody else needs to say, go for it. We just need to make sure that we get the referrals in and that people start using uh, the equipment. Telecare, um, it's amazing what pictures you can get off the internet these days, isn't it? Um, gives the whole um, range of support for people and we can all sit and in, interpret these to show that actually it is about making a difference for people and it is about people at their own front door staying at home and not being uh, at risk. We've had some really interesting discussions with our fire service colleagues uh, recently because we have had a number of people who've uh, died in fires recently and there's a whole range of reasons why uh, that might be and it was really interesting what Adrian what you were saying about ability and need because actually you could treat all those people the same based on their need but it was completely to do with their ability to respond to things uh, their ability to get out of somewhere on time and it's given us a completely different way of looking at how we use telecare 
to support people to make sure that we've taken all of the risk factors into account, particularly the person's attitude and ability themselves. The discussion about um, integration is really important and the reason it is is because actually none of this is going to work unless we get back to some of the really old-fashioned good um, multidisciplinary working that many of us have been used to uh, doing throughout um, our careers and we used this fund, the, the money that came via the PCT, to fund some of the work that the King's Fund had been doing and Eva and others um, from uh, the Epsom area were involved in that. And one of the things that it did was show, particularly for uh, the front door particularly of Epsom Hospital, is that actually there wasn't any fancy big restructuring that needed to happen. There wasn't any um, real uh, issues, except that people needed to work together differently. They needed to trust each other. They needed to be able to have different conversations. They needed to respect each other and just understand the huge pressures and... Um, and demands that are on us all in the system and how we work together. And one small example of that is the belief that actually social care wants people to be in acute hospitals is a complete myth. Because the minute someone goes in unnecessarily to an acute hospital, the social care costs go through the roof. So we don't want them in there any more than anybody else does. But there was this idea that we kind of think hospitals are a place of safety. You know, it's free care to us, so that's really good. Actually, when people... Uh, go into hospital and then come out um, many weeks later, they're more dependent and more costly. So we're just as interested in keeping people at home. And um, I'm very keen, we heard a presentation from uh, West London uh, uh, Health Community, and they've been doing some work called virtual care around primary care, really about using risk stratification, having the social workers work and the district nurses and everybody working very closely with GPs to understand their population. And in effect, it's that virtual ward in the community. So we're going to be looking at some of the things that they've been doing. Oh, my goodness. This will teach me to look at my um, slides a bit earlier um, uh, and see... Um, uh, how we can do that. God, I'm impressed with whoever put these together. They are really good. <laughs> and that's why integration is imperative. Okay. <laughs> so, we want it mainstreamed. Um, is that, that's gone. That's, that's gone, that date. We're doing it. Um, and we want it to delivered, telecare delivered by districts and boroughs. And we want a common approach across the county. We're looking for this number of installations each year. And we're very keen to link this up with telehealth. One of the things that's really important in making the telecare thing happen is having somebody at the other end of the line who is able to do something. We have a lot of people in Surrey whose relatives live many miles away and if they get a call at two o'clock in the morning that mum is wandering or doing something, they actually can't get there in time. They need someone local and near who's able to do that. And that's why it's really important that it is as local as possible. So the work that we're doing, the districts and boroughs, is to enhance the offer that they make locally to people to make sure that we can have that response on the end of the phone. And that's difficult because that's expensive. So we need to make sure that we get it right and that we have that working um, across the county. Uh, and the other bit for us is actually using some of that very latest technology. One of the problems with telecare and telehealth, but I know about telecare, is that you just get everybody signed up to one bit of kit and then it completely changes and it's much better. It's a bit like, you know, the BlackBerry users like me thinking that everybody's all got their iPads and should I have one of those now? Um, but no, I'm going to stick with uh, mine. Somebody with Blackboard probably find that really insulting, wouldn't they? But it is about just making sure that we are looking to the most recent technology and making that work. Okay, thank you very much. I, I just would emphasise that the thing that has really struggled with us for telecare is people being brave enough to use it and to refer people for their use. So that's the message that I want to get across. This is all here now. We just need as clinicians, practitioners, nurses, whoever we are, to use it and make it work. Thank you.